Well, thank you very much to the organizers. It's really uh, a pleasure to be here and to be able to share some of this work with you. Um, I presented a couple years ago at the, the MSG meeting in California, and the story has uh, matured and evolved since then, so this is going to be an update. Uh, so thanks again for having me. Okay, so this is a particularly confusing topic, and uh, for the most part, I blame uh, pre uh, previous iterations of our understanding regarding the taxonomy of the group of organisms that were lumped together under the catch-all phrase of Imancia. So shown here is an updated, uh, simplified cladogram that shows the relationship between different organisms that were uh, previously identified as Imancia. Um, you can see in bold are the, the three kind of uh, previously named uh, species. Now, I'm just gonna point out that Imancia crescens and Imancia parva, um, there was considerable, considerable debate as to whether they represented distinct species or whether they were sub-varieties of the same species. Uh, and that's because, that's because they have uh, considerable similarities in the morphology, ecology, and pathophysiology. So this is uh, the microscopic appearance of the, the mycelial phase. You have these um, complex florets of canidia on canidia fours that, that uh, jut out at 90 degrees. Uh, now these become aerosolized and they be can be inhaled usually by small mammals but occasionally by people. And they undergo a dramatic expansion from you know, about half a micron, one micron in size, to up to 500 microns in size, which represents a, a million-fold volumetric increase. And these uh, very large cells are called adiospores. By definition, uh, this means that they do not uh, replicate and they do not disseminate. Uh, however, they can cause a granulomatous host response, which leads to a disease that is common in animals but is very rare in people, called adiospiromycosis. So, what we now know with the benefit of uh, more uh, thorough genomic interrogation is that these two species are actually not very closely related at all. In fact, Imancia parva is more closely related to Blastomyces dermatitidis than it is to Imancia crescens. And this is really the origin of a lot of the confusion regarding this, uh, this genus. Now, fortunately, some taxonomic uh, changes have uh, recently occurred that have aligned with the, the phylogeny and have better clarified the relationship of these organisms. Now I'm going to start by talking about a genus that you may have more familiarity, and that is Blastomyces. So now, uh, due to this taxonomic overhaul, there are at least five different species complexes within Blastomyces of varying degrees of pathogenicity. Uh, these ones that I've highlighted here are the ones that are uh, definitely of proven pathogenicity in humans, and I'm going to talk about them in a bit more detail. Pardon me. Uh, we're all familiar with this slide from the CDC, which basically um, highlights the biology of Blastomyces dermatitidis. So the, the mycelial phase exists in nature. Um, it's characterized by these, uh, these terminal conidia on the end of, of conidia fours that jut out at 90 degrees, characteristically appear like lollipops. Now those uh, conidia become aerosolized, they can become inhaled by mammals, including by people, and in the lungs there's a temperature-dependent transformation to yeast-like cells, particularly in Blastomyces dermatitidis. These are double refractile uh, walls with, with uh, broad-based budding. And generally, the size of these yeasts for Blastomyces dermatitidis is 8 to 15 microns in size, although they can be even larger than this. Now, this is the uh, geographic range of Blastomyces dermatitidis, uh, extrapolated from the CDC map, but to include uh, Canada. And um, you'll note that, sorry, um, I just want to point out that blastomycosis is primarily a disease of dogs. In fact, uh, there are about 10 times as many cases in dogs as there are in people. 
and people in turn develop the disease at 10 times the rate uh, as do cats. In other words, for every cat infected, there are about 100 dogs that develop the disease. Uh, you may be familiar with uh, cryptic speciation within Blastomyces dermatitidis. A couple groups have demonstrated some uh, distinct genetic subpopulations within dermatitidis, and this has led to the naming of a new uh, species, uh, a cryptic species called Blastomyces gilchristii. Now, there are no clinical, morphological, ecological differences of which we are currently aware, but there are epidemiological differences. Namely, the areas uh, of the world that have the highest incidence rates of blastomycosis, being northwestern Ontario and northern Wisconsin, are also the places that have the highest proportion of isolates that type is B. gilchristii. Um, what you might be surprised to hear is that we are actually in a region of geographic risk for blastomyces right now. In fact, we've recently described a new species of Blastomyces called Blastomyces helicus. Uh, on this map, juxtaposed with the geographic range of Blastomyces dermatitidis are where human and animal cases were diagnosed. And you can see the cases came from areas not typically considered endemic for blastomycosis, including Alberta, Saskatchewan, Montana, Idaho, Utah, Colorado, Nebraska, Texas, and California. There are distinct morphological differences of Blastomyces helicus compared to uh, dermatitidis. In the mycelial phase, most conspicuous is the absence of canidia seen in vitro. In addition, the, uh, the hyphal appendages can form tightly wound uh, helices under certain conditions. The yeast phase is smaller than for Blastomyces dermatitidis, usually about four to five microns in size. And while they do replicate uh, with broad-based budding, just like Blastomyces dermatitidis, they can form multiple concurrent buds, and that results in uh, short or variable length chains, and can also lead to uh, strange uh, branching configurations seen as well. <coughs> Shown here are the first 10 uh, human cases that we've described, um, again, from regions not typically considered endemic. Um, most of the patients were immune compromised. The most common sample from which uh, Blastomyces helicus has been isolated has been blood. Now this is in uh, stark difference to Blastomyces dermatitidis, which is uh, generally not isolated from blood. And uh, the majority of patients died. Shown here are three representations of radiographic findings of uh, pulmonary disease due to Blastomycosis helicus. Um, as with uh, severe disseminated blastomycosis from B. dermatitidis, you get micronodularity, cavitary lesions, ground glass opacities with pleural effusions. And in vivo, the uh, yeast-like phase, um, again, shows that distinct morphology that I showed you um, that, that we observed in the lab, broad-based budding with uh, strange chains and bizarre uh, branching configurations. On the left, this is a calcifloro stain of uh, a BAL specimen, and on the right, this is a, a gram stain of a blood culture bottle. In addition to humans, animals become infected, and we've described five companion animals, also from uh, similar regions in the United States. Um, now, I'll just note, although the sample size is very small, uh, so far, there's been an equal distribution of, of dogs and cats. Now, a clue to the ecological niche of Blastomyces helicus may have been provided in the exposure history of one of the dogs that developed the disease. This was a dog from Colorado who was noted by his owner to enjoy playing in prairie dog burrows. Now this is significant because in 1998, there were a pair of occupationally acquired cases of blastomycosis in Colorado among students who were relocating prairie dog burrows. Similar to what John has mentioned, uh, literally digging up the burrows for, for uh, uh, relocation. Uh, in that case series, the, the histopathology was described as uh, being 
uh, broad-based budding yeast that were small, and uh, they were identified as B. dermatitidis on the basis of a, a commercial DNA probe, which we know cross-reacts with Blastomyces helicus. Unfortunately, there's no voucher material from these cases, so we can't prove it, but these were almost certainly due to Blastomyces helicus. Uh, now, the treatment um, for B. dermatitidis, at least based on antifungal susceptibility uh, data, is likely similar to for Blastomyces uh, dermatitidis. Susceptibility is retained for the newer triazoles and amphotericin B. In addition to North America, blastomycosis has been reported from 19 countries in Africa, the Middle East, and Asia. But there have long been differences noted between North American and African uh, blastomycosis and blastomyces isolates. The most compelling uh, among these uh, were reported by Leo Kaufman at the CDC in the 1980s, who reported that the AXO antigen, which is related to the blastomycin adhesin 1, an essential virulence uh, factor of uh, blastomyces dermatitidis, was ubiquitous in North American strains present in all 88 uh, isolates tested, but was rare in African strains present in only one of 12 tested. In their uh, molecular epidemiology study, Brown et al. included three African isolates for their um, MLST. What they found is that two of these were typed as Blastomyces gilchristii, one was Blastomyces dermatitidis. Now in Kaufman's work, these same isolates tested negative for the A exoantigen. Now uh, what my group has found is actually quite different. We've recovered nine uh, isolates from around Africa and from Israel. These are from historical uh, cases um, in, uh, in global collections. And uh, what we found is that these actually belong to a new species of blastomyces, which has been called blastomyces precursus. Again, morphologically distinct, and there are definite clinical distinctions that I'll show you now. Uh, notably, uh, these strains also uh, lack the A exoantigen. So uh, summarized here are the first nine cases. Uh, most of these are from, uh, from clinical case reports, um, which uh, may uh, lead to a selection bias. Um, for the most part, patients have not had underlying comorbidities, with the exception of a few HIV-infected patients. But this is more in keeping with Blastomyces dermatitidis than it is with Blastomyces helicus. The most common site from which the organism was isolated was skin. Skin is the leading extrapulmonary site of disease in Blastomyces dermatitidis, uh, but it is notable that the majority of patients had skin disease and not lung disease among these African patients. Now that said, uh, two of the more recent cases that were uh, prospectively uh, followed, uh, I'm gonna present here, and they don't quite fit that, that mold. Uh, the first patient is a gentleman who had fleshy cutaneous lesions, and he had weight loss and hemoptysis despite four months of anti, uh, empiric anti-TB therapy. He was found to have a cavitary lesion in his right upper lobe and tracheal deviation, and on a bronchoscopy, he had uh, this fleshy mass uh, in his bronchus. And the second patient uh, had um, gait abnormalities and morning headaches. He was found to have perihilar disease and a blastomycotic brain abscess. Now, the histopathology findings in these cases have been very similar to with blastomyces termitididis. Uh, so these have included double refractile cell walls, which are very nicely illustrated here, and broad-based buds. However, the mold phase is quite different from blastomyces dermatitidis. As you can see here, the uh, canidia appear in more complex florets, more similar to uh, what was then called Imancia parva than Blastomyces dermatitidis, which again has these classic lollipop forms. In addition to these, there are two other species that I'm just briefly going to mention that have uh, questionable pathogenicity in people. The first is Blastomyces silverae. that has been isolated five times, twice from clinical isolates um, from uh, Manitoba and Saskatchewan in Canada. Uh, however, there was not pathological correlation of disease. So it was uh, surmised in both of these cases that, um, that these 
these isolates were not involved in, in causing disease. Uh, the other isolates have been from soil and from a weasel. And Imancia parva has been renamed as Blastomyces parvus. And again, that's because of the close relationship um, that is demonstrated uh, phylogenetically. Now, interestingly, perhaps armed with this, uh, this new data, when um, uh, Cybrin de Hoek's group in, uh, at the CBS uh, in Netherlands went back and looked at some isolates, they thought that they were more, um, the thermodependent parasitic phase was more like large budding yeasts rather than true adiospores as has previously been assumed. Uh, that's in contrast to Amontia crescens, which does clearly form true adiospores. In addition to these, there's been a new genus created to accommodate newly described species that have been uh, reported to cause disease in immune-compromised patients around the world. For better or worse, this genus has been called Emergemyces. Now, cases have been diagnosed in South Africa, where the disease is predominantly caused by Emergemyces africanus. In fact, Emergemycosis is now recognized to be the most common dimorphic fungal infection in South Africa. Emergemyces canadensis, which is endemic to Canada and uh, the United States, and I'll show you a breakdown of those cases in a moment. Emergemyces pasturianus, which appears to have a more cosmopolitan distribution, with cases reported from at least four European countries, from India, China, Uganda, and South Africa. And Emergemyces orientalis and europaeus, both isolated only on single instances, from China and Germany, respectively. Emergemyces uh, canadensis is the species that has been reported from North America. This is the uh, morphology of the mycelial phase, um, similar to the other uh, Emancia-like organisms that we've seen with these complex florids, in this case a bit more complicated with secondary uh, cadidiophores. And uh, the, the yeast phase is characterized by small yeasts, about two to three microns in size, that bud at narrow bases. Now, three cases have been diagnosed to date in Saskatchewan. One case has been reported from each of Colorado and New Mexico. An additional case has been diagnosed, but I'm not privy to the geographic origins. Now, for the four cases for which we had clinical data, uh, which we reported earlier this year, the clinical details are, are presented here. Um, the majority of, of patients, in fact, all in whom we could ascertain it, were immune compromised, two with HIV, one with a renal transplant. All patients had disseminated disease involving uh, skin, blood, uh, in one case, an endocervical lesion in addition to fungemia and uh, pneumonia. And half of the patients died. Now, with a focus on Emergemyces africanus, which, again, I said is the most commonly encountered species, we wanted to understand the biology of this disease and the organisms that cause them. And in essence, we wanted to replicate uh, one of these fancy infograms from the CDC. So, um, in 2015, uh, we performed a retrospective case series of cases that were identified through passive laboratory surveillance in South Africa in partnership with Nilesh Govender at the NICD in Johannesburg and one of the two major private laboratories. What we found was uh, 52 cases that were diagnosed from around the country. Now, the majority were diagnosed in the Western Cape, although this is certainly a, a diagnostic bias. Now, if you look at the uh, purple figures, these represent cases that were diagnosed in the public sector. Red cases were those that were diagnosed in the private sector. And given the fact that only 15% of South Africans have private health care, um, the ratio of public to private is more in keeping with what we observed in, West, in the Western Cape, where there were 10 public cases for every private case. On the other hand, outside of the Western Cape, most cases were diagnosed in the private sector, three quarters, in fact. And to me, this suggests that we're underdiagnosing the disease and, and really uh, this likely represents the tip of the iceberg. All patients were immune compromised. 
One was a renal transplant recipient, and the others had HIV infection with a median CD4 count of 16. By far the most, clinical present, most common clinical presentation was the presence of widespread cutaneous lesions, which was observed in 96% of patients. Pulmonary disease was also common, and abnormalities on x-rays were noted in 87% of patients. In addition, uh, fungemia did occur with um, the organisms seen in, in macrophages. Now, uh, given the high uh, rate of pulmonary and systemic symptoms, and given the high incidence in that country, it's unsurprising that three-quarters of patients were treated <coughs> as tuberculosis. In fact, half the patients died, and of those, half died without a diagnosis of a fungal infection, which really highlights the dire need of better diagnostics and, and better, patient, uh, better clinician awareness for these endemic mycoses in this country. Uh, shown here is in vitro susceptibility data performed in the lab of Nilesh Govinder, 50 isolates of Emergemyces africanus. The majority uh, retain susceptibility to the triazoles, and amphotericin B um, uh, was active. So uh, next we turned our attention to the environmental form of the disease, oh, sorry, of the fungus. And extrapolating from what is known for other dimorphic fungi, we started our search in soil. We collected soils from around South Africa by convenient sampling, and we tested them with both culture-based and culture-independent uh, techniques. What we found is that 30% of soil samples from the Western Cape in South Africa had uh, DNA of Emergemyces africanus demonstrated by PCR. Uh, despite developing quite a sensitive um, mouse passage uh, model for the isolation from soil, we were unsuccessful in, um, in recovering any culturable um, organism from soil. I should point out that uh, the, the DNA was found across a wide range of soil habitats, including agricultural garden soil, uh, soil associated with the finbos, um, uh, horticulture, and uh, etc. Next, we tried to prove whether we could identify the organism in uh, circulating in the air. So we set up a Burkhardt spore trap on the roof of a building in an urban area of Cape Town near where patients had been diagnosed, and we sampled continuously for a year. And what we found was that Emergemyces africanus could be proven by DNA uh, to be circulating on 10% of all days. And then finally, touching back to John's hypothesis regarding a, an endozoan um, uh, role for, uh, for animals in the distribution and persistence of uh, dimorphic fungi in nature, we tried to prove whether or not natural infection occurred and if there was a particular association with a certain animal. This was in part inspired by other uh, geographically restricted dimorphic fungi, namely Teleromyces marnefii and Paracoxidioides species, which have been closely associated with the bamboo rat and the nine-band armadillo, respectively. We screened 1,400 animals. Uh, comprising 26 different species, including some that had partly uh, fossorial or burrowing lifestyles using PCR, and we did not detect Emergemyces africanus in any of them. So to date, natural infection of animals has not been proven. So to summarize, there have been some major taxonomic changes that have uh, clarified uh, relationships of dimorphic fungi, some pathogenic and some less so. Blastomyces now includes uh, five distinct species in addition to um, a cryptic species. Most notable among these include uh, Blastomyces helicus, which causes an atypical disseminated blastomycosis in western parts of Canada and the United States. Blastomyces percursus, which appears to be the predominant cause of, of African blastomycosis and um, other organisms for which uh, there is less data. In addition, a new genus of uh, clinically important pathogens have emerged, and uh, this is something that clinicians in the United States should be uh, on the lookout for.
So I'm just going to close by thanking my many uh, uh, co-contributors and collaborators. And um, as always, I close by thanking my family, without whom none of this work would have been possible. Thank you very much. Cool talk. Thank you. Um, if the Emergomyces can grow at high temperature, it sure sounds like a bird or an animal. How about birds? I'm sorry, can you How say about that again? looking for Emergomyces in birds? Yeah, that's uh, They have higher body temperatures than mammals. I don't know. That's right. That, that's, uh, that's a good suggestion. I, I don't know if you've had a chance to do the kind of work that Dr. Taylor did in, in terms of examining sort of the gene expression and sort of what it, it tends to, might grow on in, in terms of what um, enzymes and other things it encodes for. Uh, so far what we have uh, determined is that this organism likes to produce urease and um, so there have been predictions about the various uh, ecological niches uh, based on the various um, use of substrate in the lab. But so far, we haven't been able to extend that into uh, predicting and finding it in nature. 